All right. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hope you're well. Our topic will be supply. If you haven't seen the first video on demand, supply, and market equilibrium, please watch that video first. The first video focused on demand. This video will focus on supply. So here we go. Now, supply in economics is the amount in terms of number that producers are willing and able to produce at each and every price in terms of currency in a given time period or other things being unchanged. Let's have an example. Say you walk into Tesco and you want to buy pens. Tesco is our producer or our supplier in this instance. The commodity you're trying to buy is your pen and at a price Tesco might want to supply a given number. For instance, if it's a pound, they might just want to sell one. If it's two pounds, seeing they can make more profit, they might sell more. Okay, so how much would they want to sell at each and every given price? This is your supply relationship. Now, the supply curve is just a graph that shows this relationship. So I'm trying to draw a curve as we speak, right? So we usually have price and the vertical axis and the amount, okay, right here, amount or quantity on your vertical, on your horizontal axis, okay? Now, if we put a pound here, two pounds, three pounds, one pen, two, three, okay? The supply relationship is usually a positive one, okay? So when prices increase, normally, the amount applied to the market increases, as you can see here. So when the price was a pound, one pen was supplied, two pounds, two pens, three pounds, three pens. So you get to see that it's usually a positive relationship. So what we just said is a supply curve is a graph that shows the amount that producers are willing and able to produce at each and every price at a given time period. So your curve is a graph that shows that supply relationship, okay? Your schedule will be your relationship in a tabular form. Now, usually a movement along the supply curve shows a change in quantity caused by a change in price. So let me draw our curve again, okay? So we had zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. We had P here in terms of pounds and we had Q here in terms of number, okay? Now we had positive relationship that way. It was one to one, two to two, and three to three. Now, when you have a movement along the supply curve, up or down, Right? This is only caused by a price. So when price moved from one to two, quantity moved from one to two. Okay? When price moved from two to three, quantity moved from two to three. Okay? Now this is a movement along the supply curve. It's caused by changes in price. But you can also have a shift in supply. So let's have a shift in supply. If this is our supply curve one, we can have a second supply curve two. Now you can see that our change from supply curve one to supply curve two has nothing to do with price. So when the price is two pounds here, right? The quantity has moved to three now, okay? This wasn't caused by price. It could be caused by other factors. For instance, a change in the number of producers. So if you have more producers, the price might still be the same, but because you have more people producing that good, you have more people producing that commodity or that item you have more supply in the market change in technology for instance if there's a change in technology technology becomes more efficient we can produce more at a faster rate then supply will increase a change in costs if the costs come down of course supply will increase 
subsidies and taxes. For instance, if the government subsidizes your production cost, you can produce more. If the government ta taxes you more, you have to produce less because of the tax. Future expectations. If producers feel in the future that they can sell this same item for a higher price and get bigger profit margin, they might stop supplying now in the present so they can supply more in the future. Now your resources and your technology determine what is possible to produce. So supply is a reflection about what is technologically feasible to produce. Now, just like we showed in the graph, the law of supply is very simple. It states that other things remaining the same, the higher the price of the good, the greater the quantity supplied. So when price goes up, suppliers supply more. This is in contrast with demand. For your demand, when price goes up, quantity demanded goes down. So think about it. As a customer, when the price of something goes down, you usually demand less of it. Supply is the opposite. When the price goes up, suppliers supply more of it because they want to make a higher profit. So that is just law of supply. Other things remaining the same, the higher the price of the good, the greater the quantity supplied. And the lower the price of the good, the smaller the quantity supplied. This law of supply results from the general tendency for the marginal cost of producing a good or a service to increase as the quantity produced increases. Okay, so as you produce more goods, you have your cost of production increases as well. And that is why suppliers will only want to supply if they can at least cover the marginal cost of production. Okay, now don't forget what we said, a movement along the supply curve, okay, is caused by a change in price, all right, a shift in supply, okay, it's caused by other factors apart from price. Now, this just shows you here an, uh, an extension of supply, okay, so supply is moving from, um, q1 to q2 right because price has increased from p1 to p2 right so quantity increases from q1 to q2 because price increases from p1 to p2 and then we have an extension of supply conversely we can have a contraction of supply so price drops from p1 to p2 and because of that quantity supply drops from q1 to q2 hence we have a contraction of supply now this just shows both um uh, a decrease in supply and an increase in supply but this hasn't been caused by price remember our factors we spoke about that can cause a shift these are other things apart from price like technology uh more competition um um taxes and subsidies so this will cause a shift so here you have an increase in supply and here you have a decrease in supply now you can have an industry supply curve the same way we can have a market demand curve this just shows a sum of all the supply in the industry so here we have firm a from b from c right and these are the individual quantities that they are supplying to the market if we add everything up we have the industry supply curve okay really simple um here we have an industry or total market supply of farmers in the market who supply uh tomatoes and um, potatoes sorry when we sum them up right we have our market um schedule our market supply so right here on the right we have the market schedule and we've plotted it right here on this graph so you can see when price is 20 quantity is 100 so here we have price 20 quantity 100 here when price is 40 quantity is 200 okay 40 and 200 right when price is um 60 quantity is 350 okay so we have 60 and 350 here and when we plot the whole thing we have our supply curve so it's really simple so all you have to do is look at the schedule and plot your curve 
really simple, okay? Now for our class activity, all you have to do is to plot the supply curve for this supply schedule, okay? So get your supply curve, don't forget, price and quantity, okay? Don't forget that and you will be fine, okay? So draw the supply curve for this schedule. And that's it for this week. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you later. I will put up a video for market equilibrium, okay? And that will bring it all together. It will bring demand and supply together in the next video, all right? Have a fantastic week and uh, watch the last video and see you later. Bye.